finally I've gotten a hold of more ROMs to try out Naomi 2 emulation with. I now have a large chunk of the library, only missing some revisions of games and stuff that wasn't dumped, like Sega Driving Simulator and Jet Squadron, which never actually released in the first place. During this time, more updates have come out for Flycast, including DirectX 11 support, and I'm going to show off that here with some uh, B-roll of various games in the background as I explain them. Firstly, card emulation has now been added to initial D arcade stage. The version that you're seeing on screen here is version 3. The emulator creates a .card file and it's placed into the data folder within Flycast. There's also a new binding in Flycast that allows you to insert the card, but you'll have to create a new card first before you can actually use the card system, or you can import a file, I, I assume at least. Now you can save your progress and tune your car to get better times and new sound effects which are pretty cool. I'd say this is the least intensive Naomi 2 game, so if you have a computer that's a little behind the times, you're good here, unlike some of the other games that you can play. Unfortunately, however, the other two card system games, Club Cart and Virtual Fighter 4, do not have their card systems emulated and likely never will fully, but you never know. People really want a Virtual Fighter 4 card system. It'll be very exciting when that happens, and as for Club Cart, I doubt it'll happen because European Session 2003 is a thing. Next, across the board, Fur Triangle Transparency Sorting has been optimized for both OpenGL and DirectX APIs. However, I advise you to just switch to DirectX full time as the performance benefit is very large. I had an increase in frame rate of about 20% across all the games I played on my setup. It makes rollback online for Virtual Fighter 4 actually bearable. Her triangle sorting looks better than her strip and runs just as well while not being quite as accurate as per pixel. But there's a small trade off being made there. I did notice during Ready? play in VF4 Go. that the transparency of the 3D objects didn't seem to really uh, kick in, and it made it pretty hard to see on some stages and some scenarios. Games now also have game specific inputs, and I mentioned before that Soul Surfer had some added, but I didn't realize that in order to actually find them, you needed to actually watch the game, so that's my fault. So, you gotta launch the ROM, and then you can access the inputs. And for example, Soul Surfer has its own special inputs. I think it's like Swing, and uh, Roll, and there's one more that I forgot. And every driving game has inputs that are called like handle or swing and it's not going to be too difficult identifying them because they show up with their names next to them in the input menu. So I have admittedly poor looking soul surfer footage and a lot of wild riders footage. This game is just incredibly addictive. Wild Riders is likely the most intensive game on the only two followed by like Virtual Fighter 4 on some of the more demanding stages like Garden and Temple. Virtual Fighter 4 likes to play with the high quality models and fancy lighting effects, but Wild Riders just throws a ton of geometry at you. It's constantly rendering new things, it has these wide open play spaces that are fairly detailed. The cell shading comes along. It ditches the realism the comic book art style reminiscent of Jet Set Radio, and it plays a lot like an infinite movie, except it has an end. I feel like if it didn't have an end, then it would be a much more popular game, but I digress. The UI elements are also all over the place, but they scale really well in widescreen. I'm really surprised that this game looks as good as it does. It feels like it was meant to run on a widescreen panel. There's only like two instances, I think, where it doesn't, like you can see like the borders on the uh, the UI elements. It's like, like the start when they're doing the tutorial and it's at the end when you're like putting in your, uh, your name for your high score and that's it. It just 
scales very well, so if you want to show people what Blackcast is all about, I recommend you play this game. Soul Surfer, meanwhile, still seems to have a lot of problems, and it, while it's not that intensive, it's known for having very advanced water effects for the time, but judging from this Flycast footage, you'd think it didn't age well at all. Well, the seams in the water, they're not really meant to be there. You can see in this footage that I pulled up here, the water has no seams, it looks like it's moving properly, and it looks like the wave is moving, but on Flycast, the illusion kind of breaks. It feels like during gameplay that you're just sitting on this static uh, wave, and you pretty much are. You also have to keep holding down the button, button to make sure that the game doesn't show you that the surfboard peripheral is connected, so a fix for this would be very welcome. Club Cart has no real issues to speak of graphically with the shadows and some light and being fixed a while back. However, there are some caveats when discussing the overall series of games. European Session 2003 is the one you want to play. It works right out of the box, everything is unlocked, and you don't need a club cart car to access all the tracks. This is in contrast to European Session Revision D, where only four tracks are unlocked and you only get two speeds and your cart isn't customized whatsoever, it just remains white. There's also Club Cart Prize, however that game has not actually been emulated properly yet because it's missing a hopper of some kind. When that's fixed, there will be an update, but it'll likely take a while as I don't think Demo emulated this either. Overall, Naomi 2 emulation is in a much better place than it was before with Demo and on Flycast in January. I hope to see more improvements in the future as Flycast barrels its way towards another major Fight K2 release. I know I didn't cover every game, so that will be done in a separate video without a voiceover that showcases pretty much every game on the platform, running in widescreen. I'll do that the moment I can actually play Beach Spikers and Virtual Striker 3 without looking like a dumbass. Till then.